This is the copy of the Testament of Reuben, which include the commands that he gave to his sons before he died in the 125th year of his life. Two years after the death of his brother Joseph, when Reuben became ill, his sons and his grandsons were gathered together to visit him. He spoke to them, saying, My children, observe that I am dying, and am going the way of my fathers. And seeing his brothers Judah, Gad, and Asher there, he said to them, Raise me up, so that I may tell you, my brothers, and my children, about the things I have hidden in my heart. For look, I am passing away. And he arose and kissed them, and said to them, Hear, my brothers, and do these things, my children. Listen to Reuben your father, and the commands which I will give to you. And watch as I call the God of heaven to witness against you today, that you do not walk in the sins of youth and fornication, of which I was involved with and defiled the bed of my father, Jacob. And I tell you that he struck me with a sore plague in my loins for seven months, and had our father Jacob not prayed to Yahweh for me, Yahweh would have destroyed me. For I was thirty years old when I did this evil thing before Yahweh, and for seven months I was sick to the point of death. And after this I repented before Yahweh, and devoted a renewed purpose for my soul for a period of seven years. During that time, I abstained from wine and strong drink, and animal flesh did not enter into my mouth. I ate no pleasant food, but I mourned over my sin, for it was great. And this type of sin had never been done in Israel before. Now listen to me, my children, about the things which I saw when I repented, concerning the seven spirits of deceit. Consequently, seven spirits are appointed against man, and they are the leaders in the works of youth and seven other spirits are given to him at his creation, that every work of man should be done through them. The first spirit is the spirit of life, and with it the constitution of man is created. The second is the sense of sight, with which arises desire. The third is the sense of hearing, with which comes teaching. The fourth is the sense of smell, with which tastes are given to draw air and breath. The fifth is the power of speech, with which comes knowledge. The sixth is the sense of taste, with which comes the eating of meats and drinks, and by it strength is produced, for in food is the foundation of strength. The seventh is the power of procreation and sexual intercourse, with which sin enters in through love of pleasure. For that reason, it is the last in the order of creation, and the first is that of youth because it is filled with ignorance, and leads the youth as a blind man to a pit, and as a beast to the edge of a cliff. Besides all these, there is an eighth spirit of sleep, with which is brought about the trance of nature and the representation of death. With these spirits are mingled the spirit of error. First, the spirit of fornication is seated in the nature and in the senses. The second, the spirit of gluttony in the belly. The third, the spirit of fighting in the liver and in the gall. The fourth is the spirit of servility and chicanery, that through officious attention one may appear to be fair. The fifth is the spirit of pride, that one may be boastful and arrogant. The sixth is the spirit of lying, in perdition and jealousy to practice deceits and concealments from kindred and friends. The seventh is the spirit of injustice, with which are thefts and acts of rapacity, that a man may fulfill the desire of his heart, for injustice works together with the other spirits by the taking of gifts. And with all of these the spirit of sleep is joined, which is that of error and fantasy. And with that, every young man perishes by darkening his mind from the truth, and not understanding the law of God nor obeying the admonitions of his fathers, as was the case for me in my youth. And now, my children, love the truth, and it will preserve you. Listen to the words of your father Reuben. Do not pay attention to the face of a woman, nor associate with another man's wife, nor meddle with the affairs of women. For if I had not seen Bilhah bathing in a covered place, I would not have fallen into this great iniquity. For my mind, taking in the thought of her nakedness, kept me from my sleep 
until I had performed the abominable act that I did. For while Jacob our father had visited his father, Isaac, when we were in Eder, near the town of Ephrath in Bethlehem, Bilhah became drunk and fell asleep while she was naked in her chamber. For this reason, having gone in and looked upon her nakedness, I did the impious act without her perceiving it, and departed while she slept. And immediately an angel of God revealed to my father concerning my impiety, and he came and mourned over me, and touched her no more. Chapter 2 Consequently, pay no attention to the beauty of women, my children, nor set your mind on their affairs, but walk in the singleness of heart in the fear of Yahweh. Exert your efforts towards good works, and on studying, and on your flocks, until Yahweh provides you with a wife, whom he will, so that you do not suffer as I did. For even until the death of my father, I lacked the courage to look him in the face, or to speak to any of my brothers, because of the disappointment I had felt. Even until now my conscience causes me anguish due to my impiety. Yet, my father was very comforting to me, and prayed to Yahweh for me, that Yahweh's anger might pass from me, even as Yahweh had showed. And from that point on until now, I have been on my guard and haven't sinned. Because of all this, my children, I say to you that you should observe everything that I instruct you, and you will not sin. For a trap to the soul is the sin of fornication, separating it from God, and bringing it near to idols, because it deceives the mind and understanding, and leads young men down into Sheol before their time. For fornication has destroyed many, because, though a man be elderly or noble, or rich or poor, he brings reproach upon himself with the sons of men, and is mocked by Beliar. Now, you have heard about Joseph and how he guarded himself from a woman, and purged his thoughts from all fornication, and found favor in the sight of God and men. For the Egyptian woman did many things to him, and summoned magicians, and offered him love potions, but the purpose of his soul did not allow evil desires to enter. Because of this, the God of your fathers delivered him from every evil and hidden death. For if fornication does not overcome your mind, neither can Beliar overcome you. For women can be evil, my children, and since they have no power or strength over man, they use craftiness by external attractions that they may draw him to themselves. And whoever they cannot captivate by external attractions, they turn to craftiness in order to overcome him. Furthermore, as it concerns women, the angel of Yahweh told me, and taught me, that women are overcome by the spirit of fornication even more than men, and in their heart they plot against men. By way of their adornment they first deceive the mind of men, and when men glance at them with their eyes, the poison is injected. Then, when this act is accomplished, the woman takes them captive. For a woman cannot openly force a man, but through the devices of a harlot, she seduces him. My children, flee from fornication for that reason, and instruct your wives and your daughters to refrain from adorning their heads and faces in order to deceive the mind, because every woman who uses these deceptions has been reserved for eternal punishment. For in this very way they allured the watchers who were on the earth before the flood, these watchers continually gazed upon them, and they lusted after them, and they conceived the act in their mind. For they changed themselves into the shape of men, and appeared to them when they were with their husbands. And the women who lusted in their minds after the forms of the watchers gave birth to giants, for the watchers appeared to them as reaching even to heaven. Accordingly, beware of fornication. If your desire is to be pure in mind, then guard your senses from every woman. Likewise, instruct the women not to associate with men, that they may also be pure in mind. For constant meetings, even though the ungodly deed may not be done, are to them an incurable disease, and to us a destruction of Beliar and an eternal reproach. For in fornication there is neither understanding nor godliness, and all jealousy dwells in lust. As a result, then I will say to you, that you will be jealous against the sons of Levi, and will seek to be exalted over them, but you will not be able to. 
for God will avenge them, and you will die by an evil death. For God gave the sovereignty to Levi and to Judah along with him. He also gave positions of rulership to me, to Dan, and to Joseph. That being the case, I instruct you to listen closely to Levi, because he will know Yahweh's law, and will give ordinances for judgment, and will sacrifice for all of Israel until the consummation of the times, as the anointed high priest, of whom Yahweh spoke. I urge you by the God of heaven to do truth to each and every one of your neighbors, and to entertain love for each and every one of your brothers. And draw near to Levi in the humbleness of your hearts, that you may receive a blessing from his mouth. For he will bless Israel and Judah, for Yahweh has chosen him to be king over all the nation. And bow down before his seed, for on our behalf it will die in wars, both visible and invisible, and will be among you as an eternal king. After this, Reuben died, having given these instructions to his sons. And they placed him in a coffin until they carried him up from Egypt and buried him in Hebron, in the same cave where his father was buried.